Hi, I'm Antonia. This is Universally Me. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Antonia Carlotta and check out my Patreon where I've got a ton of extra posts, pictures, and videos. I've spent the last few years making video after video about the classic Universal monsters and movies, but there's one man that I have yet to make a video about. And without him, the monsters that we know and love today, well, they wouldn't be the same monsters that we know and love today. Nobody else could have made the magic that he made. This man is often referred to as the father of the Universal Monsters, and he created many of their iconic looks. I'm really excited to be making this video today. Today, we are talking about legendary makeup artist, Jack Pierce. The oh, best yeah. makeup man in the world. Uh, what, what is, I owe him a lot. Jack Pierce was born Yanis Pekula on May 5th, 1889. He spent his childhood in Greece and immigrated to the United States in his teenage years. He wasn't instantly drawn to the film industry. In fact, before he ever got involved in it, he actually had hopes of being a professional baseball player. In 1910, Jack Pierce was hired as a theater projectionist and then managing theaters by Harry Culver, who founded Culver City. I saw reports that he dabbled in acting and stunt work, but I couldn't verify those but he did work as an assistant cameraman at Universal before finally pivoting to makeup in the 1920s. One of Jack Pierce's first major makeup undertakings was the 1927 Fox film, The Monkey Talks. For this film, Jack turned actor Jacques Lerner into a monkey using putty, chamois, spirit gum, and fake hair. My uncle Carl Lemley saw Jack's work and was more than impressed. He put Jack under contract and Universal would become his home for many years. In the 1920s, Lon Chaney was the king of makeup. He would use makeup to create characters who horrified you, who you sympathized with, who for some reason or another pulled you in and intrigued you. When Lon Chaney passed away in 1930, it left a void in the industry that Jack Pierce was ready to fill. The first Universal monster Jack Pierce worked on was 1931's Dracula, starring Bela Lugosi. Unfortunately, because of Bela's stage background, he insisted on doing a lot of the makeup himself. And I guess I say unfortunately, not because there's anything wrong with the look, only because we didn't get to see Jack's take on it. Still, Jack Pierce did influence some of the look, including Dracula's infamous Widow's Peak. Jack Pierce got his opportunity to shine later that year when Universal started production on Frankenstein. In other videos, I've gone over the appearance of Frankenstein as described by Mary Shelley, but Jack Pierce got to fill in a lot of the blanks that Mary Shelley left out and really let his imagination fly. Bela Lugosi was originally slated to play the monster, but in Jack Pierce's own words, Bela had too many ideas of his own that didn't coincide with my Uncle Carl's, and Bela just thought his ideas were better than everybody else's. As we all know, Boris Karloff got the part, and now it's hard to imagine it any other way. Jack Pierce spent four months creating hundreds of sketches and models. The way he thought about it, Henry Frankenstein wasn't a doctor, he was a scientist, so the monster's look really had to reflect that. Jack made a life-size model out of clay and brought it into Junior Lemley's office. Junior said, wait, you mean you can do this on a human being? Jack confirmed and Junior said, all right, we'll go to the limit. Boris sat in the makeup chair with Jack Pierce for four hours every day starting at 4 a.m. Allegedly, at Jack's request, Boris removed a dental bridge in his mouth to enhance the asymmetry in his face. Jack built the distinctive forehead and brow ridge with spirit gum, cotton, and collodion, and the heavy eyelids were made using putty. Jack also worked with Max Factor to create a bluish, greenish, gray makeup and dark lipstick, and added scars all over the monster's body to make him look extra spooky and cadaver-like. And Jack devised costuming tricks to make the monster appear almost eight feet tall. It's so hard not to just keep going on and on about all the special touches that he added to this character, and not to just do the same thing for all of his characters, but like, we don't have enough time in this video. 
Your homework is to go look at his other characters, especially the work that he did on The Bride of Frankenstein, The Mummy, and The Wolfman. I hope this gives you a good idea of his attention to detail and what made him such an incredible artist. Jack Pierce and Boris Karloff always shared a great working relationship with a mutual respect for each other. It may have been because of their shared immigrant background or their dedication to their crafts, or maybe just their professionalism. They always got along really well. Those same feelings, though, did not extend to everyone at Universal. Bela Lugosi and Jack Pierce, for instance, clashed because Bela always liked to take the lead on his own makeup and never wanted to cover his face too much. Lon Chaney Jr. wasn't a fan because he hated the grueling process it took to become the Wolfman. His costume consisted of yak hair being glued to his face and then singed with an iron, and he sometimes thought that maybe Jack Pierce was burning his face on purpose. Elsa Lanchester said, he really did feel that he made these people, like he was God. He would be dressed in the morning all in white, like he was in a hospital ready to perform an operation. A word I often hear to describe Jack Pierce is cantankerous, and I think that sounds about right. He was just so meticulous, so precious about his work that Despite his genius, despite the magic, he just wasn't everyone's favorite collaborator. That being said, he did seem to have a fun side, I guess. In a previous video, I talked about the Universal Studios basketball team that went on to win an Olympic gold medal. Crazy story. To give you a little background, Universal Studios was full of Uncle Carl's friends and family. So in addition to normal work and events, there was also the Universal City Club, which had different sports leagues, including the Universal basketball team. This was both for fun and for publicity. The basketball team was called the Universals and Jack Pierce was their head coach. He would travel to games and tournaments. He would help scout new players who would then also get hired on as crew at Universal. And he would help promote upcoming films. And all of this was while he was running the whole makeup department at Universal too. Even though his reputation at the studio wasn't always ideal, from everything I could find, he was really loved on the courts. Back in the studio, makeup techniques were evolving, and by the 1940s, Jack Pierce's techniques, once seen as state-of-the-art, were now just considered outdated and expensive and time-consuming. Plastic and rubber prosthetics were replacing the old materials that Jack Pierce was used to working with, like putty, burlap, collodion, all of that stuff. And Jack Pierce, well, he just didn't want to change. So after more than 20 years at Universal, Jack's reign came to an end. After Universal, Jack Pierce freelanced at the old Hal Roach Studios for a while and worked on the show You Are There, hosted by Walter Cronkite with reenactments of historical events. He worked on Joan of Arc and The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, where he made up Boris Karloff as Frankenstein's monster in a dream sequence that didn't make the film. His final four years of work were on the TV show Mr. Ed from 1961 to 1964. Jack Pierce died at 79 years old in 1968, and hardly anyone attended his funeral. Today, any classic horror lover knows who Jack Pierce is, but that wasn't always the case. In fact, despite creating almost every character for Universal from 1931 to 1943, he wasn't credited at all until the 1940s. He never won an Academy Award or an Emmy. He didn't give a lot of interviews and interest in him waned over the years. It would be decades after his death before a book or a documentary was made about his work. Today, we see Jack Pierce for the innovator he was. In 2003, the Hollywood Makeup Artist and Hairstylist Guild posthumously gave Jack Pierce a Lifetime Achievement Award. And in 2013, the Cinema Makeup School in LA dedicated a memorial gallery in his honor. And according to Wikipedia, there have been efforts to get him a star on the Walk of Fame. For my part, I can tell you that I rarely have a conversation about the monsters that doesn't somehow include Jack Pierce. And I've heard so many modern filmmakers cite him as inspiration. 
So I think his legacy endures. Two questions for you guys. One, who or what is your favorite Jack Pierce creation? And two, what movie did Jack Pierce not work on that you wish he did? Even a modern film, but what do you wish you could have seen his take on? Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Antonia Carlotta. Check out my Patreon for bonus content. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already, make sure you subscribe now. Thanks again. Bye.